Um, okay, so we are a few lines below the middle of the page, Mamches. The line starts with the word Behal Bushi. A couple of lines below the middle. A couple of lines below the middle. Something cold or something hot, rather? Uh, yeah, I heard something uh, just uh, hot. Um, can you imagine we? We went through seven lines this morning. Anybody got exhausted chasing or running? Okay. Coffee or water? Yeah. Yep, hello. Ah, we started already? Well, we identified the, uh, the the point. Okay. The base. And it's a, f- a few lines below the middle of the page. The line begins, Balavushim, a memches. We started talking this morning a little bit about the term oir. Just to get us a little bit into the concept. See, this is constantly referring to everything as oir. Oir as seichel, oir as nefesh, oir as midas. I mentioned this morning. <coughs> There's a certain um, similarity between oir and mind light and water. Water settles in settles into into the cave, into where where it, it it comes in. And so that oh it there's a difference in that the Mayim, the water self is in Kaili, totally ignoring the Kaili. It does not tell you anything about the Kaili. It, it remains water and it and it acquires the contours of the Kaili. And the Kaili is merely holding the Kaili, holding the water. Whatever form the Kaili has, the, 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 the water form settles in, but the water does not reveal anything about the cave. So literally, in the water there's absolutely no difference what form the cave is. Oir also settles in in, in, in every crack or crevice of the cave. But it it, it reveals something about the cave while while this while it it, it fits in, and it lets you understand the cave better as a result of the presence of the oil. As we say by many times. Uh, this world and eight hadas in general pertains to Matthias. At the lowest level, Matthias is 
the, the physical tangibility of, of the physical world. Which it does not speak about any kind of highs, any kind of of, of uh, highs. I'll explain what, what I mean by what highs. I mean it's very important at this point. As mentioned, this we mentioned. Um, I don't know where I mentioned this or, or, or I didn't see it. Chaius does not exist independently of the source of Chaius. We speak about this many times, whether it was mentioned these days here and there, but we think about it. And, and this is, this is, has been provided for by the Mavish so that we should have physical experience of Chaius on the physical level. How can experience highs on the physical level? It's it's it's, it's incongruous. It's the physical is not living. We have an experience of highs on the physical level in the fact that that highest is what we, is the air that we breathe, and the air actually engulfs us. And the highest element, the sense of the highest, is not in the air that we that we draw into us, or the air that surrounds us, like that. It's constantly make sure that there is an, a flow of air going into our into our nostrils. This is the sense of highness. As demonstrated by the fact that when a person is in a whatever condition that's pressing him or he, he lacks um, calm or whatever it is, he goes out into the fresh air. And what is the expression of God in the fresh air? Not the breathing, ah, a breath of fresh air. It is the, the being contained and engulfed and embraced by the fresh air, rather than the air that he takes in, of course, he has to take in. But the highest element consists in the, in, in, in the fact that, that he's being embraced by highest. That's the only. That's the only way to experience highs. Highs. A person lives, like we say, we speak all the time. He lives through breathing in through a through a tube into his nose. It's not highs. It's survival. It's not highs. It's not an experience of life. It's maintaining that he's not dead. Hopefully, he will come out of this and be able to experience life. But this is not an experience of life at all. So, Oir. Let me say, Oir Hatoir. Oir brings chaos. Because oil illuminates the 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 cave. They say the is my is my illuminates the cave and shows how this cave is also related to the to the source of light to the highs. This is not merely a cave the gashmis. It is really a cave that can that can. Um, that contains oil that can uh, relate to highs, <coughs> and um, the, the, the most of this, as we always point out, that even though in our world, I mean, Ezekiel, possession is something which is a personal uh, a gain of, of the individual person. It's like you say, it's hadas, it's a mitzvah, it's mine, it's mine. But really, the principle that it's mine and that's, that this is mine really goes all the way up to 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 the highest of the world. It is the Abishter who provides that that capability, that ownership capability. There's a highest to it, and this is what Taylor reveals. It's a living phenomenon. As we always point out, this is something which is extremely revealing, and I hope that that, that we explain it in this from time to time. How 
how this enables us to actually see and, and experience of Hashem's presence in our physical orientation. Even at the level we're saying that it disputes. In time shall shake it. Even in time shall shake it. What is time shall shake it here? The time shall shake it. But what are we dealing with? We're dealing to whom does this belong in terms of the truth of the world? It is not like we say all the time, the lion grabs his, his turf. No, this is something granted to this human being, granted to this person. And we have to be very careful. Hey, the neighbor should grant it to him. There's a truth to this to this ownership phenomenon. This is the meaning that Torah is mislabish in the in the levushi, mislabish in the levushi like. like like the emotion of the, of the of the air, of the oil, mislabish, it goes into every crack of the levushim, fully occupying it. At the same time, it actually illuminates it. And this is another phenomenon which, uh, which can, we can add to the speaking, this general uh, overview is that, yes, indeed, the water is dependent on the keli to be held together. The oil is illuminating the keli, serving the keli. It's not dependent on the keli at all. It actually shows you what the keli looks like and what it can be used for. Completely different, different phenomenon, even though it has in the nature of, of their of their being mislabish, there's a similarity. Okay. What's a good way to think of light being mislabish in a keli? I mean, on the one hand, Thinking of the water is easier to. Mm-hmm. Light seems to reflect off things or illuminate things, but here this is lavish in the keli. It illuminates the keli by creeping into every crack and crevice of this keli. It's not. And, 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 and we're talking about toilet, for example, we're talking about that. gets involved in time shall shake it means it actually gets involved in the entire in the in the in the, in, in the whole hell of a hester of the cave. Mm-hmm. It deals with the hell of a hester, with the darkness. Uh-huh. <coughs> Without being mitras. Without being mitras. Twitter so does not merely come to two contestants and say, Hey you gentlemen, get along with it. Come to terms. But he doesn't say that. Then instruct the Rob to listen carefully to all the timers and to give each one of them an opportunity to to present his his claims, giving him a sense of calm. Don't worry, I'm listening to you, man. You're not you're not gonna be you're not gonna be insulted. Mm-hmm. And if he has dispute, if a simpleton has a dispute with the Rosh Hashiva, they are gonna be treated exactly alike in front of the best. It's Allah. Hmm. You have to get involved in this and this whole thing. And again, this involvement is telling us that there is that there is a reality in this dispute, in this situation. Yanki Bovinu crossed the Nachal, whatever it is, it was a, a waterway, <coughs> and he himself was the bridge. 
and you cross this entire block, is a, a, a huge, a huge spread of, of, of human beings and children and wives and the animals. It was, it was quite, quite a job. And after he crossed it all, he realized he left behind packing tan, small utensils. So he goes back with the utensils. Really, it doesn't make any sense. A wealthy man, he can always replace his utensils wherever he goes. He goes back with the utensils. <coughs> Because there's a reality to it. Who reveals that reality, that ownership, significance? I want to add one more notch, which I said, but maybe not, not in sufficient emphasis. The reason that Torah is capable of being mislavish in all kinds of lugushim, even lugushim that are, as we said, Tamashal Shekir, which I do not speak of truth, and Toyo is able to be mislabishing, is that because Toyo is a prinus oi pnimi viatsmi. Toyo is oi pnimi viatsmi. And we spoke about oi pnimi viatsmi, and it's never enough. And to demonstrate what I want to say, I will go back to a very simple point that we make all the time. One on one is two ones. And even though, as we say, only two ones is not really a seichel, it's, it's just a, a, a matter of of and yet. When Seichel touches it, it brings a new light onto it. This is the beginning, so what light does it bring to it? If you have, if you can have two ones, in order to have two ones, you have to have the provision for it that allow, accommodates, allows that there be two. In the physical world, I don't want to go too far in this, I, I'm, I'm sure you understand it. In the physical world, the way the physical world is viewed, especially <coughs> nowadays that we, we, we are steeped into physicality, the, 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 the physical item makes place for itself. Like we said, it fades five minutes, it makes place for itself. But, and then when you have two, so the two things make place for themselves. But when Seichel is applied to this and says, no, they're one and one, just because there's one one, I have two ones. Without any kind of of, of, of fighting without any any kind of of, of um, digging. What is it? This this the way Seichel sees it. No, no. The provision for these two preceded their existence. They all make the, they all make the, the provision for themselves. The provision for them for them to 
there was a mocker, that's what he tells me, he says many times, that when the tzitzum, a tzimtzum, after the tzimtzum, it was mocking ponish. Mocking ponish. Mocking means a place that provides for all the things that that that, that came out of it in there. The concept that there is a mocking ponish, a provision for, for, uh, uh, for containing any number of units. And this is why one-on-one -on -one gives you two ones. There's no question, there's no problem. I only had one. You can have two, you can have three if you want. Mm -hmm. Because there is the, there's, there's the element of this provision. This is a view that comes from Oepnimi Vyatsmi. Which means the reason you had one is not because this one made place, made place, made place for itself, but because it was provision for it. And seichel, which is, which has a, a view from pnimi and that's me from a from a truth perspective, says, hey, there was provision for this too. The reason you can accommodate two is because there was provision to begin with. And there's no conflict whatsoever. You had one, now you have two, there's no conflict. They, they don't displace each other. This is really the, the, OSA, this is the, the concept of Epnimi Vyatsmi. This is different between looking at things from, from the Seichel perspective and from other perspective. Seichel sees things from a, from a truth perspective. Everything has a place. As we said all the time that that the expression that and same thing you become mokin poni the word <coughs> mokin is used also probably more correctly even yesh mokin leimer there is place in seichel to say which means there is a certain there's a there's a reality element in being able to say this and the the, the whole meaning that the world is able to accommodate two is because yesh mokim leimer. There's one yesh mokim that could, that could be two. It is from this perspective, and Torah is may pnim It means that Torah recognizes and yesh mokim provides a place and appearability for every possibility in the world. This is why Torah can descend into it and, and illuminate it. This is what Alter Rebbe says in Tanya, I mentioned, I mentioned these days. Alter Rebbe says in Tanya, that when a person learns Torah, he is learning the Mabishal's words, Hashem, Seichel, Seichel, and the Tzenish al body. Because it is a Rotsam of Hashem that when there is a dispute between two people, and Zer Taim and Toyin Kach, and Zer Toyin Kach, Yi Absar Benem Tach. It is the Mavishan's infinity that provides mm -hmm. for all these possibilities. This is part of the Rosh Hashanah. And this is what Torah gets involved in. Because Torah is, is, is rooted in, the, in this Rosh Hashanah. Therefore, Torah can find its way everywhere. Because it can relate to all of these things. I heard a phenomenal story. I have to tell you. This, uh, I, I went with my wife my to a uh, doctor's office and I was waiting, and there was another Nigiman. I found the Nigiman, he's a Rosh Hashiva. You know, a literature, but not uh, a literature, I mean, a Bayana, a Chosit. Anyways, we had a very nice conversation. And talking about the Rebbe is, is no, I mean, it, everybody knows the Rebbe is in Babish Rebbe. There's no question about it. So you're talking about, he says, and so he says to me, the Mises from Rebbe, you talk to me, the right Mises from Rebbe, are Barshemsky Mises. We all know that, that the, 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 the miracles that came out of Rebbe is not, the Friedrich Rebbe Chlaben didn't go into that. They didn't make such an effort. But Rebbe, this was, a, there was, this was flowing. Uh, every, every 
a, a dollar, a line, had hundreds and hundreds of, of open miracles. So he tells me that his chava, something happened with his chava. There were yeshiva bachim in the yeshiva. And this chava was very bright. And he was a top student in the yeshiva. I'm telling you straight off the press. Top student in the yeshiva. And he, was, he was very good. He was uh, very happy. Learning very well with all the education. Then he went to Mered Mavichidis. Whatever brought him to Yeshiva, this was not a, a counter yeshiva, it was not a Babish yeshiva, it was a Chsidish yeshiva. He went to Mered Mavichidis. So he said, Rebbe, I didn't know exactly what the conversation was about. But the Rebbe told him straight out, Your Torah is worth nothing. Your Torah is worth nothing. Sometime later, he was a top student, no, not a top student in the Sometime later, another student came on, a Ilui, a genius, and he replaced him as a top student. And he now became second on the totem pole of the issue. He was touched by it. And slowly he lost his enthusiasm. And, and he started to slip. And ultimately he slipped all the way out. Completely out. He became fry. At six years, he was he was in a different world. And then, of course, he met up with some rebellious, putting on film someplace, and he kind of reminded himself, you know, where am I? What's going on? So he was drawn to the so the, the, the film stand got him back into in, 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 on his path back, and he came back completely. After all, he did learn a lot of things. And he came by, by Kishu Brocha. Kishu Brocha, he went by the Rebbe. And the Rebbe poured him a little wine. And the Rebbe looked at him and he says, No, was I right? Directly from the cover of this guy? Yep. Wow. Another Libavitcher. And there is any deficiency, any impurity, Torah will, will force it out. Okay. So we are in the line that begins with Halvushim, and as I said, it's several, several lines below the middle of the page, Memchaz. Gam Hamas Miyilim Barachmu Islam. And even those who are Mas Miyilim Bar, Mas Miyilim means they go to the left field. Left field means in the wrong direction. Bar, with the power of time. It's possible even to draw the table in, to the small, to the left side. Even Masmi Yirin Bo, Rahmatan, Ein Zepeyel Chatsu Solom Shum Shin. It does not affect Chatsu Solom any change in the table itself. The story which I just told you demonstrates this principle. 
This Indian man, learned to a lot, he was a new, he was a top student, he learned a lot of Torah. But he learned with the, he had this, this small element. The Torah remained Torah. And eventually, it, it surfaced. It came back with, with its fullest purity. What's the Pshad? That Torah is a pure Riyadz. Rabbi Paltiel? Yes, sir. I, I'm sorry, maybe somebody else asked this. I was off momentarily. What would be an example of this Mas Milim boy? I just told you the story. Oh, that's that's an example, I see. Okay, very good. Could be, could be other example. This is a, a living example. In other words, that he uses it, he uses it to gratify his own ego. Right. That's Mas Milim. Yeah, as an example, right? Or using Torah to uh, to uh, one son to find a magala poem material shalika halacha, finding all kinds of things. The conservative movement, the reform movement, is all based on Torah so to speak. And it, it's completely off left field. Still, if there is a word of Torah there, it is Torah. If there is any Torah that's not perverted, it remains Torah. to take your top time but these are all things which, which give us a depth in what we're learning I was once personally witnessed I went to there was a when I used to work in, so there was, a, there was a, one of the workers one day it was a yid and, and he was belongs to the from from the community <coughs> temple so we went to to uh, to uh, you know to support him in two instances. One time his daughter was getting married. The other time uh, there was a burial. His one of his parents passed away, and we met the rabbi, this reform rabbi, more than I came out of Paris. This reform rabbi was a learned man. If you met him, he would say he is a regular yeshiva. He even had the gishmak, you know, this the 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 flexibility. They went to the Levayim, to Levayim. He didn't let the goy touch it. He did the whole thing from scratch, and, and you know, that's not me. I'm a helper, of course. He says, if I were here alone, I would do it all myself. <laughs> Then Lahabi, we went to a chasana. It was a mockery of a chasana. And he wanted, he wanted us to, to be witnesses, kosher witnesses at, at this group. He said, no, we are not carrying this for that. I asked him, what are you doing in the form temple? So he says, if I went here, it would be even worse. This is a totally perverted logic. But the pale mamas, it, it's interesting how he remained, quote unquote, you know, whatever he, he had was, was really in the sky. How he survived, understanding that by Levaya, you don't let go and bury them. Very, I need, I need has to do it. So, 
in the reform, and he's the rabbi. So what is the point of this story? Is this an example of the tzaddikim, Gehinnom doesn't burn them? This is, well, I don't know about tzaddikim. <laughs> this is an example that the Torah does not become contaminated. <coughs> Even though he is using it for completely of the of the of color uh, uh, support. Mm. Okay. <coughs> okay, so be on this line at the end of the line by Halbushin, Bahainu. The reason that it doesn't, that even has masmi'ili, it doesn't pay, affect any change in the Torah, mipnei shuhoir atzmi. Because this is oil atzmi. So you can uh, somehow, somewhat <coughs> get, a, get a, a sense of what is meant by the word atzmi. An oil that is independently of anything else, independently of what it is. <laughs> Not dependent on the circumstances to be oil at oil. It is oil atzmi. Independently of anything else. We have enough background to understand this even more directly. We speak about light. When we say light, the way it is interpreted now, I mean physically, is that there is uh, there is a, some kind of an energy emanating from the sun, and this energy ultimately hits an object and reverberates, and this is how we see the object. This is not an oil arts. This is an oil uh, that, that actually transforms into energy, into heat, and all kinds of different things. But we also explained that there is an element in the sun, that's called etzim behiri. Etzim behiri of the sun is not an oil that emanates from the sun, but this is the oil of the sun itself. The presence of the sun illuminates it. We discussed it many times. I don't want to go into a, into a lengthy discussion. This is called oil atzmi. And this oil atzmi does not recognize darkness. It's completely eliminated without having to be transformed in energy and by the sun coming out it becomes day, day period. And there we say it's the sun that we look, that makes day, not the oil sun. Oil not okay, let's go. In the parentheses now. Okay, we have you the same thing is found in the Shomes. The reason that the Shomes have the capability to be mevarer toivara, to be involved in toivara and be mevarer toiv from ra, because in fact, the neshama is, in essence, are that element of opening v'yatsu. In other words, when the neshama sees good, it doesn't see good because of circumstances, but it sees good because it identifies the pure good itself. But achein ha-neshama is, and thus the neshama is, gam bi-ridosom kuli, even as they have descended into the world, into a group, they do not change in essence. <coughs> the, the emanation from the Shoma, the oil on Shoma, is mislabish in all kinds of different things in the world, and it's possible to actually draw it into the opposite thing. 
but the Nishama itself does not change. Gemara Chagigo Dav Toy, which means Dav Yudzai, Yudzai, seventeen. Omru, the Gemara says over there, Aposik El Dinas Ego is your adity to a garden of egos, nuts, your adity I descended. What is the significance of Dinas Egois? Maho ego is just as a nut. Even though it gets dirty, its inside does not become disgusting. Like with Tamir Chachom, even if he sorach, even if he, sorach, even if he straight off the path, and he imp- became impure in, a, in his life, ain't a rosini messes. His toilet does not become, uh, become uh, also contaminated. Medrash Rabba Dorshum Ze Al Yisrael the Medrash Rabba, they, they apply this posik, the Drash on the soil. My ego is there. That's as this ego is, and it's not. If he fall, it falls into dirt, you, take it, you, you pick it up and you wash it off. And it is fit for eating. Likewise, to whatever the extent Eden become impure and dirty, Ba'avenes, Kolim as I saw throughout the year, Boy, Yimakipurim, Mumachapra Lehem, Yimakipurim comes and it washes it off. Why? Because that they are in essence. Toiv. So even though they become behind the question is boiled, and this is as we explained to you in the the Torah and Shom Israel, the Torah and Shom Israel, Einon Mishtanim Beetzem Gambiri Dosim, that they do not change in essence, even while they are on the bottom. They say, "Hey, begin a story Beetzem because they are Torah in essence." This is a phenomenal thing, as we experience all the time, that Ayid, even Ayid who descends to the level where he, he marries a Goy, they are two different worlds. Any mistake in the answer? Rabbi Paltiel? Yes, sir. What is, what is this word? I, I, I missed this. Which word? Is after the, uh, it's about the Ega is, Sorach. Sorach means that he um, um, essentially it means straight off. It means that he he made a terrible error. He he did wrong. He um, Sorach Sorach actually means he decayed. Ah, well, but an interesting nemesis meaning. The Torah that he learned, that right. he... Uh, the Torah that he learned does not become despicable, <coughs> does not become impure. We're comparing that to the Nishamas. The Nishamas. Because of the Nishamas, we don't compare. This is Nishamas. 
This is not a comparison. You say that the Torah he learned doesn't come. The Torah, the Torah doesn't, the Torah doesn't come. It comes and the Shomer doesn't come. Okay. Toy beats. The toy of toy, the toy of the Shomer is not circumstantial. It does not do into any kind of interest gain or whatever it may be. When we, when we say that in uh, masses, the difference between the case when a person would say like he's in the right mind says something which is which just makes sense. And then when he is let's say he's he's not well or he's drunk or something and he says stuff something which just doesn't make any sense he does not he does not make things that he made said which made sense not right doesn't make sense so we say here something more than that right it's, it means it's not, not only reacts when he when his mind is not with him what, what do you mean but the, when when his mind is not with him whatever he said in the right mind does not become wrong no so so but here is more than that right we're saying Ain't I rose in the method? This doesn't lose. Even if he does the wrong thing while his mind is with him. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not when he's drunk. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yet the toilet does not become impure. Mm -hmm. So, so if let's, so if a person let's say in in a, in a, in, a, in a world when he let's say a judge when he judges uh, he judges correctly. Then he goes outside and he does something which is immoral, let's say wrong. His judgment still remains a correct judgment, no? Also. How would it remain like an impure? Huh? How would it be impure? Is that what you're th that's what I'm asking you. I wanna it it there is gotta be something more here than this. <laughs> and the judgment is in a different category. Judgment you have to trust him that he will judge altruistically, judge correctly. If he is swayed in the wrong, you know, in judgment, you can make a mistake because you swayed him. You have ulterior interests. That you, judgment is not terosi. Judgment is, is, is. Let me say this: If I am a and he became impure. It's, it's possible you should do an Aveda. Not every one of his acts are pure. Right. The Torah remains pure. Judgment goes into the category of, 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 of act. Every Rav who is standing in judgment is, in, is, is exposed, is in danger of making a mistake on account of personal interest. The third is not correct to protect him against that. Yeah, I'm just asking how would the Torah become impure? That the Torah that's in him will become impure, <coughs> and then the Torah will not have the, the inherent power, the interest to, do, to draw him out of Torah. Right. You will not be bothered at all. Let me tell you. Okay. Hmm. I mean, it remains with him, sort of. Unlike, unlike in the in the in the world, like if let's say a person made some kind of discovery, it's not going to give him any credit. Person, like if he's out of it, I mean, if he's out of the field, I mean, he's. Does he say? You, you're probably saying the same thing, but I don't hear it in your words. What means it remains with him? It's not the, it, 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 it retains, it retains... It retains its purity. It's Torah is still trying to slap him out of it. In other words, the Torah is having some kind of effect on him.
ultimately, when he notices Agaton <coughs> in the story, when he sees a film, it awakens something in him. Because, because the Torah in him relates to it. Yeah, it's an independent life of its own. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> It's the idea of uh, Hamayr Shabday Maxim Lamutu. Yeah. Right. I mean, doesn't it surprise you that the Rebbe would say the Torah is worth nothing? It seems like really negative. I'm not kidding. Hmm. How can you say that? Say something encouraging, so he wouldn't. That w- he wouldn't lose those six years, maybe. <sighs> okay, David. Mm-hmm. You do much better trying to understand what the rabbit did rather than as cautious as that. I'm not, and that's not what I'm doing. I'm just wondering. I mean, the story is from one source, so I, the story is not verified. Anybody else? Okay. But that a cloud. Yeah, well, we're almost there. But that is cloud. In general, we have to understand the whole principle that it's possible to use the power of Torah and going to the left side, who mitzad halavushim, which is only because of the lavushim that in which the Torah was placed. Loy mitzad etzem oir ha Torah, not from the perspective of the essence of the Torah, the essence of the life of the Torah, she ain't a mishtal shel bebchinas tevara. Because the oil ha Torah is not mishtal shel, does not go down to mishtal shel, does not evolve in the in the in bebchinas tevara in tevara element. So therefore, when he perceives that this is something which we'll, we'll try to understand, when he perceives a tendency and a leftward leaning um, element through the Torah that he has learned, it is not the Oyer HaTorah itself that the, that that. Uh, um, Develop that discovers for him an, a left-leaning um, uh, uh, view. It is the Lubushim in which it was, in which through which he understood the Torah. His Lubushim? No, the Lubushim in which he put the Torah, in which the Torah was Muslavish. Let's try to put it, give it a little bit of a lavush. If by learning Torah, one develops the, 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 the sharpness, the, the, the thought process, that enables him to be devious. Enables him to be devious and to take advantage. 
and so forth. And enables him in one thing, but then he finds also justifications for it. Torah itself forewarns this kind of thing. The okay? Torah says that if if um, if um, if there's a judgment, if there is a dispute between a wealthy and a pauper, so the judge may think that it's inappropriate to embarrass the wealthy. He will then, or he will rather. He would rather uh, rule that the wealthy is right, and then he will tell him, he will whisper him in the ear, really he is wrong, you're wrong, you give him the money. In other words, to protect the, the, the that's that's one one justification method. Or the other one is, is I better, you know, the wealthy is obligated to support the poor, so I'll, I'll rule it in his favor. This type of, of logic is something which develops and develops in someone who learned to it and they can find um, all kinds of, of, of means by which he can in a, a, a devious pathways to accomplish whatever he wants so the Rebbe is saying that this deviousness is not because the Torah gives him that perspective It is because he got involved in the Lubushi. Let's take the Lubushi right here. We have a wealthy person and a pauper. Now, from the Torah perspective, there is no wealthy person, there is no pauper. There is a, a human being. The dispute is between two people. From the Torah perspective, the dispute is not between a, a wealthy and a pauper, it's, it is between two people. And therefore, the Torah does not does not really permit, does not really is not really the basis for this devious thinking. But since you're talking about two human beings, which means that here you're talking about the Torah, the Oyna Torah, Mislavish and Levushin. Levushin means in a specific situations, not the concept, but in specific situations. That's called comes the Levush. Now you have to get into it you get into this specific situation. That situation already permits a, a completely different different view. And there he identifies one person as a pauper, one person as a wealth. That comes not from the Torah, that comes from the Lubush. And this can can completely pervert his view of the of the of the of the Torah. This is what the Rebbe says. That the fact that it's has said must be ilim, it's not because of the Torah itself, but because the Torah is mislavish in the Lubush. And we already described this is a, this is a simple example. We already described the halal, the whole union of Bushim, how oil and the and the Torah is mislavish in the Bushim. For one thing. The, the levushim in this example you're giving now are the circumstances of the of the two parties' different wealth, right. status, whatever. Right. A, a dispute in, in this case, what we're talking about, a dispute is between two people. People have is is already a levush. It's not a pure thing, uh-huh. and people have many qualities to them. There's a red levush and there's a blue levush. As we pointed out, time is up, just want to give it a little bit richness. We pointed out that that we have a whole physical structure, how one thing is supported by the other. These are all the Lubushim that that house, that that um, 
contain and, and function on the basis of the oil. What oil? The oil of Toyla Eretz Abelim. That the Rebbeister had decreed and created the world in such a way that they will that there will be that the earth will be will be able to support building, which is the earth itself is supported by a godly decree and has no limit to what the earth is able to support. We don't notice it. We see to, to us it is an inadvertent thing. It is one physical object being placed on top of the other physical object. But these are all the Lagushi that camouflage and hide the oil. The oil is that the Rebbe is created on, on earth that is given to human beings to develop. How do you coivage the earth? You build houses, you build roads, you build businesses, and, and you establish a human society. In order to do that, the earth has to be, has to be able to provide for this and facilitate. The facilitating aspect of that is, is a godly facilitation. But when we look at it from from a Levush perspective, look at the ingenuity what people have done. They built boats. I mentioned the other day, boats. Oh, what ingenuity! They were able to provide it for it. By the original plan. But when you see. Um, a Queen Elizabeth, you say, wow, look what the human being have, have invented, have, co have co conceived. Definitely, they, they get credit for, for their ingenuity in building it and so forth. But this is part of the oil and liquid that was placed into the world. Do we realize that there are river, river paths, waterways, Throughout the whole world, originally when there were no, there were no cars, no airplanes, the original facilitator for movement across the entire globe was water. This is, so to speak, uh, uh, but when you look at the at the Kaili, at the Lapush, you say, oh, this is all this is all man-made. No, this is not man-made. This is the godly spirit that says this world has to be has to be inhabited, and every every last piece of the world has to be inhabited. Nazarebbe says, every there's not a piece of land or a yid should not try that you try it does not it's not there it, it's not it's missing <coughs> it's waiting for you to come there and there has to be facility to be able to get there let him shout at the upon the oil that the oil adds me in the lavush that hides it but really, through this language, there is an oil of the key that makes it possible. This is it for this evening. It's possible makes what possible? What? Makes the, that it is the initial facilitator of this language. There would be no boats.